welcome sisters welcome to our program on target as we start this program you can pick up the telephone and call us 442-0175 we never have a subject matter we speak about anything politics religion socio-economic issues any subject matter we speak about it you know and there are a lot of issues in the world today iran hamas israel it seems as though more and more they seems to expand that war united states jordan britain was involved in destroying some of the missiles that went to Israel. Over 300 missiles and projectiles. The war in Europe between Ukraine and Russia continues. The struggling Haiti continues. It seems that no one is near to rescue Haiti. Venezuela still want to annex almost one third of Guyana. And in Grenada here, we have our own challenges. And this morning, once again, I want to appeal to the Minister of Agriculture and Tourism, Honorable Lennox Andrew. Great injustice has been done to an individual who come from the lower socioeconomic strata. I believe Mr. Lennox Andrew, if he have discussion with the grandmother, he going to understand the poverty that this individual come from. We used to say the poor like church mice. She come from a community that was not considered in the lower income strata. And in school, she was one of the poorest students in school. She sat on the same bench and in the same economic status as the parliamentary representative from Maribu. She was provided with a plot of land from government. She paid the surveyor. She continued to pay for the land. But social challenges forced the little sister to leave Maribu and go back in Ticolo. The land was taken from her. I think the correct word might be rescind. The authority was rescind. But they take back the land from her. She spent a number of visits to the post office, the Inland Revenue, the Lands and Survey, because she had to visit and they have to make an appointment and who on holiday. And then she realized the same creature that sat on the same bench with her in school, they were good friends then because they came from the poor of the poor, took back the land from her. You see, that is significant because it's the same community Maurice Bishop felt obligated to visit to do damage control. Maurice Bishop never felt it necessary to visit Montrich and the other areas like Tivoli that is singled out for persecution. You know. But he felt it necessary to visit the comforter because in the comforter was some high pollutant people, some big watch. And that was when Maurice Bishop said you could plant weed. And over nine persons get up and ask him question. He said, don't cut down your, coke, your nutmeg and your cocoa, but you could plant weed. Both of the individual, the, the parliamentary 
the representative for Maribo and the victim. Both of them knew Fargo. Both of them knew he went to jail because what a Morris Bishop said. So I appeal to you, Brother Lennox Andrew. They claim that you and the parliamentary representative for Maribo have a very good relationship. Don't waste time telling me you're going to Inland Revenue. It will take years to give you the information. You see, the individual involved, they don't consider as anybody, they consider as a commoner and classless. So they wouldn't bother with her. But the parliamentary representative have all the information. She's known for keeping records. And you want to have a good relationship. Yes, caller, welcome. Good day, sir. And yes, good day to all the listening problem. Yeah. I just joined on, so I don't know if I could start from anywhere. Start anywhere you want. Man. Okay. Um, I don't know if you know about that deal by now, or if it's already table, because the government said they was going to take a bill where even though the property is not yours, you could still get a water connection. Now I heard them taking out of the praise and say they did that. I don't know if that bill already passed. I follow up. Whether you could get your water connection, whether the property is yours. Because before the land have to be yours. Like I said. But now so they're taking praise for that. Well again the land have to be yours to or you have to have the authority. Somebody who owns the land have to give you the authority. Or you have to add some clout. Right now. Yeah. I don't know uh, what I don't know what this, the situation is now. This government win by life. And they want to rule by life. I want to I, I don't understand. I, and I get evidence where they want to rule by life because I listen to them and they still continue to lie to the people of this country to stay in power. I don't know how they're going to do that because they lie, most of the lie they told last election, some was even impossible, but still, it looked good to catch most Grenadians. And they want to continue to, to, to with this lie to rule. I heard the man who was acting in the prime minister's space saying that the previous government gave people toilet and bath, and then people don't have no source of water. No, they don't expect water. They don't have no water, even close to them. And again, which I was lucky that someone called a conqueror, this is false. That, I don't even believe that. But the, the last, when the prime minister campaign, he going to build over 10,000 toilet and bath for the poor and vulnerable. I believe water was a main factor. I believe they would not just go and install toilet like that without making sure that it was to have some kind of income of pipe bond water. So I know this is this is part of where I know they tell a lot of lies. They also say that the previous government had people planted just to run down the government and just say a lot of false things about them. I challenge them, I ask them, on this target program, whether Sheldon program, whether the extension, come out and tell the nation what is not true. One of the activists say, we don't have nothing to say. We don't. I say, well, how could you not have nothing to say? If something was said in target program, or is not true, come out and explain, said, to the host, you make a statement of something about the present government. We come to conquer, this is not true. They say they have nothing to say. So I want to say silent mean consent. Because why you can't conquer, what is wrong? One poor gentleman, which Mr. Fair gave right to say anything. Anybody, give anybody any to come and state their own opinion. But when asked, and the gentleman is running away. So I want to know why those 
those activists not coming forward and say what is not true. They say the prime minister not answering and them not answering. I never heard it in my entire life. So that means something. Everything is right. Everything what I said is right. It don't have to be. Come forward. I call on Grenadians to listen to these people. These people did not ready for government. They end up in government by a mistake. I thought they would have learned. I want to call on Mr. P and Master Carlos. Do not give them no alternative because they're not willing to learn. The time is coming when they're going to pay for their lives. Anyone have to say anything? They're free to say anything. Thank you. Yes, Colin. I think um, it's not that there are a number of people in the National Democratic Congress that don't want to come forward. You remember scholars sing a song, I can't defend you. Some of the things that the National Democratic Congress has done, nobody can defend them. And I'll name a few. Or maybe some people should call me and name a few things that the NDC has done that cannot be defended. There is no precedent in Grenada. Nobody could say a government 30 years ago did that. Somebody give me a call. Tell me some things that this government has done that cannot be defended. Maybe I'll name a few coming to the end of the program if nobody pointed out any. You see, in life, we must look after the weak. We must look after the defenseless. We must seek the interests of the challenge in our society. Yes, caller, welcome. Yes, caller, just load on the radio and speak. Yes, brother Pierre, good afternoon. Yes, sir. Yeah, Mr. Pierre, as soon as we get into office, contract work will become illegal, will become normal. As soon as. As soon as. Don't be worried. <laughs> We have money. We go pay. Salaries will never be late. Don't worry. We go legalize marijuana. And the list goes on and on. Seaweed. We're going we're gonna to trap seaweed with, with, our, with our net. But Mr. Pierre, that is not what I want to call and talk about. I have been listening for the last couple of days what been happening in Greater here. Right? And rightly so, the gentleman before talked about Mr. Williams on a program yesterday talking about the the, the bathroom and toilet and NMP was given toilets with no water. But you know what is rather strange with that? With that, with that particular lie? I don't know if I don't if I don't know much, if I bad in much. But I hear the Prime Minister say that each one of these bath and toilets will be costing something like thirty thousand dollars. That is three zero. Thirty thousand dollars. Mr. Pierre, the average boat house don't cost thirty thousand. That's the price of a boat house. It don't cost thirty thousand. <laughs> so if if I am wrong, I know them. I know them. He's just listening. Go back and listen to that GIS um, presentation where the con said that. And in that same presentation, he said that the wash will be extended to other other areas. And it's starting in Grand Anse and where. But I want to ask them: Wasn't this bathroom and toilet thing going on way before June 2022? Ten thousand going on a lot. Of, I like that number. You know. Mm -hmm. These men and them feel people don't listen. Mr. Pierre, they want to go on the track record now of saying, oh, NDC in office now and NDC paid pension. NMP was paying pension? What, NM, what NDC did, they come and give some gratuity. Retroactive. Mike, somebody the, retro retroactive. retroactive. The, 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 the guy, the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Finance, the first day when they're making all the big pump and circumstance thing, he explained. Mike it. basically said that he, he said that they were paying pension. Yeah. The, he said that, and these little things for who don't listen. That's the reason why I tell people. I always say, just like the gentleman before, folks, listen, listen to all the programs. 
because that's the only time you're going to know what is going on. Don't say you don't listen to that person because you don't like them. You will never know what is going on. So here's this one. They're trying to placate know that the place is so nice and we have nice union, what? Industrial relations. Another NMP was this union and that union. But here this. You have a union leader on May Day in his speech, make that whole speech about a social media host on a program. That was his address. The other union leader talking about solidarity, and he was booed. Right? You know, you are now seeing Mr. Pierre. Public servants going on the live. You seen public servants talking, brought up by the past administration, mind you, and the seen officers. Right? So I want to know. When NMP was in office, what were y'all doing? Y'all wasn't on the man in the same set of NMP y'all cussing now. In the same office, all now. <laughs> and y'all still cussing NMP. Make that to me make sense. Make that make sense. You understand what I'm saying, Mr. Pierre? Hmm. Now you hear the gone Cuba. The gone Cuba, a whole heap of them. I'm seeing one person in that delegation that wants to know what was he doing there, Mr. Orlando Romain. What was his purpose? He's not a minister. He's not right. the spouse of All one of the... He he not, maybe he's the spouse of one of the people there. Because they normally go with a spouse. <laughs> so he could well be the spouse one of one of the individuals. we making a joke with this thing, right? Some people can't go away without yeah, a spouse. <laughs> so right now, we're hearing some local rumblings with Union. And these people playing back clips about Union here and Union there. Those days are gone. Mind you, NDC is in the seat right now. Mr. Pierre, the Prime Minister, gone again. The man gone again. I thought he just the come back. Came. The man gone greasing. He must, well, he may he go and get... He have to go to get some rainfall on the galvanize. Maybe he didn't get none in Cuba. Grenada is... <laughs> Mr. Pierre, this is serious. <laughs> Grenada is running an autopilot. Mm. Grenada is running an autopilot. Grenada and take note. I don't care if you're NDC or if you're NMPI. This is not normal. This is not normal what's happening in Grenada here. This is the first time it's appeared all my life I know following, following politics. I have been seeing such thing like that. A prime minister out of your island, out of your country, for basically a whole month, right? And things are happening on the ground. You're hearing allegations of, 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 of embezzlement. You're hearing allegations of incest. What can I think of hearing? And this man is not connecting with his ministers. I think he's not on the ground. You, you can't say he's not connecting. He's paying them well to keep themselves quiet. <laughs> I think what is <laughs> happening, Pierre, the, prime, is... the prime minister seems to be using the government coffers to shut the mouth of the ministers. But on a serious note, folks, look at what is happening on the ground. I don't care if you support this gentleman, if you support NNP, if you support whoever, if you don't like whoever. But what is happening on the ground here? Is very volatile and disappear. I am not advocating for nothing evil, but something is brewing on the ground that is not nice. I will say it again something is brewing on the ground that is not nice. Folks, be warned. Have a good afternoon. Yes, you know, uh, the number to call is 442 and you could discuss this issue or any other issue. You have an opportunity to raise topics. Express your opinion on it. We take position. We're not neutral. We take position. We form our opinion. But if you give us new information, we change in your opinion. Give us a call. And, um, it must be the concern. Yes, caller, welcome. Yes, sir. Yes, my brother. But I just say, I'm told you, say that the, the, the second again, I... I, I I can be so. So who really paying him? I want to visit. I won't say go again here because it's visited us visit Grenada. So that why I ask the question. It Andy, what well, collect cost collect prime minister pay because I know Andy. Andy must be a millionaire by now if he collecting prime minister pay. But I mean, you, you uh, yeah. Andy getting a good pay already and he get a good hefty thing from the bank because he's spending most of the time on on, on, on the prime minister. There, so so that that was asking that. And I wanted to defend that, that people still being locked up for, for my honor. Because just just uh, two weeks ago, we had a guy by my side. They found uh, a minor tree inside or outside bathroom in him. And, and uh, I tell the partner, I said, nah, man, they, they won't charge him for that. They will just, just warn him. And he'd he been charged for the one, the one tree. So 
So and the Prime Minister posted one tree and, and up to the day, no charge for uh, go on him. So I, I, I don't know if people see down in green and watching all this thing, but you can't just see down there and watching all this wrong thing go on. Don't say nothing, man. They have to speak out. They did wrong, wrong. He, he posted the tree and you're going to know a man charging for the same one tree. How that could be fair? Hmm. Take him, Zappi. Yes, and this is definitely worrying. Mor and I go back to Morris Bishop. Morris Bishop encouraged people to plant weed. He told them they could plant nine people asked him questions. Right in the comforter, the same village where the land was taken back by the parliamentary representative. The prime minister make movie in social media with a weed tree. And then you see a number of individuals making movie in social media with a weed tree. While that is going on, I guess the police is annoyed now because the prime minister was very disrespectful to the police and diluted the significance when he posed in the present with weed from a weed farmer the prime minister promised to legalize it the lawyer that like weed i believe was involved in a committee yes scholar welcome hey is that here? yes scholar welcome only nice i'll make you know my stop that all right thank you caller my brother William Joseph said we were making noise a very long time ago. And we appeal to our brother William Joseph. If he agrees with the plundering of the developmental bank, and he shot him out. Our brother William Joseph said we were making noise. And we ask our brother. Yes, caller, welcome. Good, good afternoon, sir. Yes, good day. Mr. Pierre? Yes, my brother. I listen to some real good news over the weekend, you know. You get some good news, share it with us. The, the, the Ayatollah, the, 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 the Islamic Republic, the Republic is um, Iran. They said about 300 missiles, bombers, and um, pain to Israel. Israel should not have them. No, no, that is not true. Then not true what? No, no, that is not true. Color, color. That is not true. United States must have shot down about 70. Britain, scholar. Israel that didn't shoot down all of them. Who are shooting down? United. Israel defend themselves to the police. The uh, United States must shoot down too. But Israel defend itself, the Ayatollah, and the, the Israelis bombers, I think. They shoot them down over Iraq. And what's about Grenada? Grenada? Huh? We go save. <laughs> Be careful, caller. Be careful when you're calling for rain to fall in your neighbor yard. It might wash out yours. The nuclear facilities, they should bomb that. Caller. I said, put nuclear bomb. Caller. In a nuclear war, there'll be only survivors. No, no, nuclear war. The nuclear facilities where they where they, where they have low-graded uranium grade. Bomb it through the chemical nuclear bomb. The United States of America, all of you really don't really know the United States of America, send the United States of America the peace and the America that. It's the United States of America to defend the whole of this atmosphere from the far Parkland to the, in the south to Canada in the north. It's the United States of defenders. We got a war, look at America, this and America, that. Them is our defenders. And all you, the most all you try to support them is better for all of us. When the European, when the Russians and the Empire, the Empire is saying and all them 
Muslims, when they're ready, when they're they come here, they're making all of us slaves as what Hitler is trying to do. So let me tell you something. When anything starts, all you have to join with America to defend this part of the world. This part of the world is a secret, the second place for all the North American and South American people. And we go join with America and defend it. No Russian can come here and defend it, do nothing. No Chinese can come here and do nothing. If all the United States, they run us up and do nothing here, they want to stay with our country. Japan, you have a good day. Yes, scholar, thank you. A number of countries help to protect. They do not want escalation of the war in the Middle East. So the United States, Jordan, and Britain assisted in trying to protect Israel. And Israel also have their defense mechanism. So I believe few projectiles and missiles got you. And they know assessing the damage. And I don't know if they lost any lives. So it's not Israel that shot down all of them. The United States, Britain, Jordan, and Israel. And what people is asking for this war not to be escalated. And it doesn't matter whether you support Israel or Russia or Hamas. The issue is to avoid escalation of this war. When you have war, millions of people is going to die. They didn't cause it. You know? And that is what is important. And we in Grenada here, the most we could do is to wish, hope, and pray. So let our thoughts and our prayers be to avoid escalation and to see if we can have an amicable settlement of the situation. The number to call is 442-0175. I, I appeal to the legal, the bar association. That is a group of individuals, our best legal minds in the country. When Deacon was introduced on the political arena, he was said to be a man with deep pockets and contacts. The ordinary man on the ground interpreted that to mean that he have a lot of money. And because he's a lawyer, the majority of lawyers are supporting him. Deacon has made some fundamental policies that would have serious repercussions in the future. And I believe some of our journalists who have an opportunity to interact with lawyers should seek their opinion on the following. One, why do we have a third party directing our foreign policy? Two, the GDB bank fiasco. It appears that the government ministers who would not have been able to qualify for a loan in the commercial bank is plundering the GDB. Another one. Why we have several members of the top hierarchy of the NDC as agents selling passport. The laws must be quiz. Isn't that opening a cesspool for corruption? The question might ask, who is going to guard the guards? The government become the chief cook and bottle washer. You see, if the Bar Association want to command respect in the country, the intervention on fundamental issues must be known. You saw the reluctance of the bar to express any views or opinion when we had the referendum on the Constitution. They perhaps should be leading on the referendum for the Constitution. 
The Bar Association has not intervened in any conflict in Grenada. Not in the 70s. Not in 1983. Not in 1979. Our best legal minds have stayed very quiet. Every time, every time our country is challenged, is seriously challenged. That could never be right. They are generally well-educated people. They are the best paid group in the country. They want to command respect, but they hide. They stay like snake in the grass. They hide. Anytime this country is challenged, Deacon Mitchell is using the bar to give people the impression that he has a lot of contacts and he has a lot of money and flaunting the money. I've never been unemployed. When I wanted nice things, I know where to get it. And that is why he's so insensitive. So I believe some of our journalists and radio personalities who have the opportunity to interact with members of the Bar Association should ask them. Come out from your cocoon. Should ask them some of these questions. You see, the government has introduced restorative justice. That is practically a legal term. The, the lawyers and the psychologists and sociologists are, are the ones that perhaps are more familiar and more accustomed with that term. But when you look at the practicality, according to Bishop, the workability of restorative justice, it boils down to political vengeance. I ask this question. At the end of the NDC life, whether it is five years, 10, or some of them say 25, when another political party comes in power and they continue with the entrenched policy of political vengeance, what is going to happen to this country? Does those individuals who believe they're in a different social class, could that protect them? Let us see what is going on in Jamaica. Jamaica has been known for quite a lot of political deaths, particularly wrong election. And even today, there are a number of police divisions in Jamaica over the last two years is still under state of emergency. You hear about the crime level in Trinidad and other countries. In some states, the army is called to help the police. We have to ask the question, if a government decide to institutionalize political vengeance, restorative justice, and set up a ministry, set up a ministry, MIT, for this political mischief, should it not be the concern of our legal minds? our trade union partners, other civic groups and institutions in this country. Or maybe when crime reach in front you do, that is when you're going to be concerned. The Prime Minister said loud and clear that weed is going to legalize. 
But when the Prime Minister went and made a movie with that illegal, what seems as an illegal object, an illegal withdrew. Well, weed is illegal. But we saw on social media look like weed tree. It is practically legitimizing. He is practically informing the unsus unsuspecting that is legal for them to do the same. And he did it in the police present. Yes, caller, welcome. Mr. Pierre, good yes. um, afternoon to you, sir. Yes, my brother. And a pleasant afternoon to your listening audience. <laughs> I am very balanced politically speaking right now. I think, you know, after many years of being around politics and as I grow older, I think I have learned to be more balanced, you know, and more rational in terms of how I look at politics. But I want to say this here. I find it quite concerning that there is so much accusation of wrongdoing, corruption, cronyism, and misappropriation of funds attributed to this administration, and nobody is coming out and saying anything. I want to say to the present administration that failure to address some of the issues and failure to answer relevant questions is a recipe for disaster because perception will become reality even when they are unfounded. Mr. Pierre, I also want to see what surprised me the most is the fact that not one supporter or, or activist of the National Democratic Congress can call your all program and, dis and dispute what you all are saying. The question I'm asking to my fellow NDC brothers and sisters is why the silence is so deafening when all this accusation is being leveled against the party and government that you fully support. I thank you for the time. Yes, my brother. I have been um, confronted in the bar in the rum shop recently and I pointed out the same thing. The consistency and the quality of the individuals on social media. You know, every one of them is dying and challenging the authority to take them on. Jenny Simon, I believe, an individual who are wrong quite a long time, was once an active member of the National Democratic Congress. Speak out. Sheldon Scott also was around for quite a while. Speaks on the issue. The royalty, the classroom. New kid on the block. The classroom. Master Carl. The boss. All these individuals are there. And what they are saying is consistent. And many of them speak on the same issues. I don't show clips in my program. And I'm not so interested in breaking news. But what they have been saying is consistent. And they have been doing everything to bring the facts. And that's what counts. When people are speaking and you cannot challenge them. And they're bringing evidence and facts. Then who are you to doubt it? Yes, scholar, welcome. Mr. Pierre. Yes, God. You, you talk about what I say in this fact. Let them go in the court and prove it. Take them to court. They are the power. All of them. All of you are the power. So what I say Go and put them in court and prove it. Are you attacking nonsense? That is accusation. I don't even know what you're talking about. Nothing all you say is true. I'm just making up things. I just say. That is all, you, that's all, all you're doing. Nothing I will say that say that is true. Because I already po listen to me. In time to come, this government will take action to make our prove everything I already say. Just pay cool, just get any facts. 
gather it from the packs of all this thing, and then they go use the packs to clean all them. Okay. Yeah, that is why, yes, Color, thank you. And Color, that is why we call people like Ray Roberts, William Joseph, Dan Lee, Cousin Dan Lee, and others who have been very vocal below, before, about accountability, transparency, and good governance. That is why we call on the trade union leaders. And that is why we call on the Bar Association. In recent times, we've been calling on journalists in the rest of the Caribbean. I have also called for secondary school children from, from three. You who are doing economics and social science and what, to start to ask questions. Yes, caller, welcome. Mr. Pierre. Yes, my brother, welcome. Your, 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 your mantra is... is um. Tolerance. Right? Yes, we have to have to disappear for the most for the last ten for the last ten years and probably more. The NDC had this guy called Kim Jones on the radio. No tolerance. Said all sorts of nonsense. I agree with you, caller. All sorts of nonsense about Kit Mitchell. He called them a Thomas, them a damn ass. This guy played dog backing when Pamela Moses was speaking in the parliament. When the same them a damn ass was talking in the parliament. It's what he say. You want to be behind some room with keep the church run some race. Let me see which one will last longer. Connor, you talking about tolerance and take up thing about what what anything you can do? There are more things this guy say and still saying, what is wrong with you people? What is wrong with you people about tolerance? Mr. Pierre, let me tell you something. Eh? People like those, if they was alive and talking this kind of nonsense during the the the, the, the most bishop time, they mean jailing. The same came to his hand. Jail. jail. Dr. Mitchell showed the Dr. Mitchell showed the most level of tolerance for these people. All the NAP ministers showed the most level of tolerance for these people. And they still do it. Ask the NDC and Decon. What are they paying him? Ask Andy. What are they paying him? Ask Ron Redhead. Why are you paying him? This man come on radio and say, Ron Redhead and Tevin Andrews give him five hundred dollars from their first salary. He said that on the radio. He said that on the radio. You understand? Seven and Jews and Runners Beanyard, Ian Jangles Beanyard, Deacon does Beanyard. That is a man that does be around here. He say that he does get information before ministers get it. That is something for national security to deal with. Deacon Mitchell, you have to deal with that. How you have somebody saying on radio that he getting information before ministers? Even when the NMP was in office, this man saying he have information from ministries. How he getting it? The same cell phone bill like liquid. How he get that? Somebody was doing it then. So here we go. The table study go up and no. I have no tolerance for this kind of stupid people, Mr. Pierre. Have a good afternoon. You see, Kola, what what, are, what take place in Grenada here, and I've been on the radio speaking speaking about it for a long time. The National Democratic Congress have lowered the standard for people in social programs on the radio. Or people like us who are um social media individuals holding talk show because of the objectionable the, the 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 obscenities what was said on radio and the national democratic congress embrace it and applaud it now they have to deal with a group of individuals if we don't show tolerance if we don't show respect if we don't try to do better than the standard the NDC set, what is going to happen to this country? The National Democratic Congress permitted the individuals to cost the church, to say the worst thing about Dr. Keith Mitchell, and as you pointed out, other members of the team. But during that time, I had new respect for the members of the NNP. Peter David, Gregory Boyne, Oliver Joseph, Yolan Bain, Emlyn Pierre, Miss Modest, Mr. Steele, and all the others together with Keith Mitchell for the level of tolerance. And this, this attitude from them was very good for democracy. 
even if NDC has awarded the Prince of Eight and they become students of the most fractious motivational speaker in the country, if we want to salvage Grenada, we cannot go down that road. We have to show people, even if you could do it, you don't have to do it. But we must forever challenge. You see, we could get the politics right in Grenada, you know, because we could encourage politicians in the future that you do, you should not tell lies. We know you're not perfect, you might excite the truth, but you must not sit down and plan lies. That is what the National Democratic Congress do. We could provoke institutions by our lobbying and by what we agitate to do better we could force the Bar Association when issues that transcend party politics and it is in their legal arena that the Bar Association must speak. Because these same laws want to command respect in the country. We could encourage trade union leaders. Never never to support restorative justice. Restorative justice is vengeance. We are a small country. By now, Dick Mitchell should know that he must be related to Kate. Perhaps he don't know that yet, but he must know. So then, stop looking for green and blue blood. And that is why we have to extend our level of tolerance. And that's why we have to encourage the members of the NNP, irrespective of what's going on, don't lose your focus. Don't you lose the policy and the philosophy and the culture that you have of being tolerant and inclusive. That is why Mr. Tobias Clement was worried that the NDC is not an inclusive party. And he was correct. Yes, caller, welcome. Mr. Pierre, good afternoon. Sir. Yes, my brother. Mr. Pierre, I know you over the years, and I know your deals a lot. I don't know if you still do it with farming and also animals. Mr. Pierre, if you're looking for a sheep to eat, you will buy any sheep to eat. But if you're looking for a sheep to mine, to give your grandson to mine, you will look for pedigree. Deacon Mitchell and his administration create the atmosphere in Grenada to make us shake hands with dogs. Have a blessed day. Yes, and um, we have to be very careful about that. I am extremely concerned about the hostility that I see in the NDC hierarchy for people in the lower income group. I'm particularly concerned. I am concerned about the callous, reckless, and vindictive way the NDC is going about dismantling people who are trying to make a dollar on the road. I'm extremely concerned about the manner in which the NDC set up the workers in Grand Bar Estate and fired them. I've had the opportunity to exchange and interact with people in the caregiving program with tears in their eyes as they lost their jobs or they afraid to lose their job. The first one was the cry of the pregnant woman. She did not want her boyfriend to go to Trinidad. 
She didn't know me. But it appears the boy was listening to me program and talking about me at home. So she maybe she believed I had clout. So she said if they fire the boy, he tell her he going in Trinidad. She on her fifth child then. And she want to beg this boy don't go. The girl is certain like daylight. If the boy go, that is the end of the relationship with her. And the worst thing is the boy was an NNP that vote for NDC, you know. They catch him celebrating. The sister catch him celebrating when NDC win. But he couldn't take the talk. Because at that time they say, let them NNP starve. He make for Trinidad. He tell me he sent her a box, but he tell her he living quite in the south. So that is too much trouble to send her a box. And the woman say, she sure he wouldn't able to study her. Ask her why. She say, well then, he's a, he's a nice boy. He's a hard working boy. He's a good man. And I know them three that there and one good man. Them three that woman go take him. That is the sadness. That is what the NDC does not understand. That is why they call people commoners. And classless. And beggy beggy. And needy and greedy. How come 50 years after independence, we have a group of people that leads your country. They are the shepherds, you know. How could we accept that? A group of people that lead your country, they were voted in power. Nine seats. And they squander in the people vote. The people who vote them are hurting the most, you know. The people in the lower income group. Could you imagine the teacher's union president? He must break all the rules of the TUC. And he won the green blood come out in the ministry. When last have you heard TUC president? Does the president TUC agree with restorative justice? Does the president of TUC agree with the plumb line of the GDB bank? Does the president of the members of the NDC are agents in the CBI program? Does the president of the TUC agree with what is done to agriculture? Now, we must be concerned. These individuals are in our society. They are the most intellectual, the scholars of our country. And they have turned against the poor man. That is why Derek Walcott of St. Lucia, he was surprised at the divisiveness of the social order in Grenada. You know. Grenada social class don't obey logic. You know. A man could live in the same house with you. And he get a little certificate. And he believe in more than you. you know. Sometime by the, the time the child graduates in secondary school, they don't want their mother coming graduation. You know. The sister John Galt kept Miss Cousin. She sat on the same bench with the parliamentary representative of Mary Boyd. But the only difference between these two poor church mouse was the father of the parliamentary representative of Maribel had more clout. That was the difference that have one living in poverty still. 
and the other in a better position. If we continue like that, there will be more social decadence. Because the schoolhouse is not rising to the occasion. 70% of the children that exit from school are expected to be called commoners and classless and beggy beggy and needy and greedy. 70% of them. I ask this question. What do you believe the future holds? What do you think the future holds? You might be in a good position. You might be living in gated communities. But if all around you is decadence, what you expect? The National Democratic Congress believe that the previous government was giving the poor people too much handout. So I ask you now, which side is getting handout? The next time you have an interaction with the Minister of Education, ask him what is the cost to train a medical doctor or somebody with a master's, bachelor's degree, associate degree. What does it cost to train them? And what does it cost to provide a toilet and a bathroom for a household of nine? What does it cost to train them? Some of the, our scholars never return you. Some of the people that had one island scholars, they never returned back to the country. You know? But government invests money into them at the expense of the people in the lower income group. When this government come in power, this government had no problem for money. You know? They met a tidy sum in the treasury. They were collecting more money than what was projected in the budget. The CBI program or the passport selling program was do doing better than they dreamt. But because of their hate and their bitterness, they removed $150 from the elderly. They re removed money from the physically challenged. Sholian was crying out, Lord! And they take the money from disadvantaged children and give it to those who didn't need it or who didn't ask for it. But always remember, you get a government you deserve. We're back with you again tomorrow between 12 and 1 for another opportunity to punch. Thank you very much.